world that we get excited about, how much more should we get excited about God and, and in his house? And I don't even, I guess I taught my daughter without really, I didn't have to sit her down and teach her what we were doing. She kind of she kind of just saw it and she learned from our praise and worship and she jumps and bounces everywhere she goes. So why not do it in the house of God as well? Amen. Uh, also glad that my aunt B is with us and my mom. Uh, amen. And uh, since y'all are here, we'll just keep it to about four hours tonight. We'll go short. Just joking. If we could, uh, if we could just stand real quick, I do have a prayer request, kind of a dire need, if you will. I learned about it as a, a coworker of mine. Uh, I don't see him every day. I see him maybe every so often, but he reminds me of just like my brother-in-law, Dylan. He looks like him. He talks like him. He even found my brother-in-law on Facebook, and he even was like, man, that looks just like me. Uh, and if you know my brother-in-law, he's, uh, he's a very funny guy. But anyway, this coworker's name is Colby Wallace, and I just learned recently that his son has, uh, he's six years old, and he's got stage four cancer. So talk about just uh, taking the wind out of your sails. And I want to lift him up tonight. I want to lift his family up. I know y'all don't know him, but I just, it's been on my heart since I heard about it. Been crying out to God for him, shedding tears for him, just, uh, but I know we serve a God that is able, and he's got a plan, he's got a purpose, he's got a purpose for Colby and uh, his family, so I don't know his son's name, I know he's six years old, let's just lift him up right now. Lord Jesus, we thank you and we love you, God, and we lift you up right now, Jesus. We lift you up, God, knowing that you're able, Lord Jesus, you are the healer, God. You are the great physician, Lord, and we believe it, Lord Jesus. Oh, lift them up unto you, God. Cover the Wallace family tonight, Lord Jesus. Cover him, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord. Minister to him, God. Jesus, we praise you. We lift you up, oh God. We honor you, Lord, tonight, God, for who you are. God, you are sovereign, Lord. You are unlimited, unrestricted, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you tonight, Jesus. We love you tonight, Lord. In the name of Jesus. If you could just remain standing for the word, I will try to hurry uh, through this first set of scriptures. I kind of have a lot of scriptures tonight. That's just the way I kind of teach. <laughs> but I like to kind of dissect the verses as we go. Um, God, he put this message on my heart. It's uh, been weighing heavy on my heart. It's for me, definitely. And I know that it's for uh, the body of Christ as well. And it's, if you know, I came up through the shipyard uh, first as a machinist, outside machinist. We work on valves, pumps, motors, and uh, I've had, I got like a relief valve, so this message is put into me, and it's just every so often just pss, pss, it's relieving itself, and I've been sharing it with coworkers. I've been sharing it with uh, people at work and just different people, and they're like, wow, that is a, that is a great thought or that's a great reminder. Uh, and it's just been good. It's been planting seeds in some people. So uh, so praise God. So I want to deliver it to you tonight. We're in the book of Numbers, chapter 13. And we're going to start at verse 25. Numbers 13, verse 25. And I'm going to begin. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. Now remember, this is about the 12 spies uh, from Israel. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel 
unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh, and brought back forth unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people, say the people, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Verse 30, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are all able to overcome it. Verse 31, But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. In the last verse, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which came up, which came of the giants. And please pay attention to this second half of this verse. And we, say we, were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. So just for a little while tonight, I want to minister on this subject. How do you see yourself? I'm going to just go to the Lord one more time in prayer. God, we just ask, Lord, that you anoint this message, Lord. Let every word that proceedeth out of my mouth be of you, God. Open up every heart, every mind, Lord, to be ready to receive your word tonight, God, and then hide it in our hearts, Lord. God, we want to be closer to you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> now, the children of Israel, those are God's chosen people. This is the, the promises and, and the benefits of God have been placed on the children of Israel. God, he set a pillar of cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night to lead the children of Israel. So they had leadership. He uh, led them out of the bondage that were in Egypt. And then they saw miracle after miracle, blessing after blessing. They went through the Red Sea on dry land. They went through the wilderness, and God fed them every single day. And then God dwelt in their tabernacle. <clears throat> but any time that opposition came, they started to doubt. They started to lose a little bit of faith, and they started to question Moses and question the leadership and question God, why are you doing this, God? Why is this happening? Why are you taking us in this direction? How come back in Egypt we had fish and, and this and that? And, man, if we could just go back to Egypt, they would always want to go back to their bondage. It's how they saw themselves. Tonight, I just don't want us as the church to live through testimony after testimony, miracle after miracle, blessing after blessing, only to walk around with our heads down and our countenance looking like we have lost the battle. Jesus, he is an encourager. He's our strong tower. He is our refuge. He is our hiding place. He is our strength. He is alpha. He is omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the author and finisher of our faith. As Christians, we can be guilty, even myself, walking around with our heads down sometimes. I don't know if that's due to us trying to be meek, the spirit of meekness, I don't know if it's due to our battle scars or if we're truly just not embracing the joy of the Lord. But I want to help us tonight to understand the importance of knowing who you are. You are the child of the King. You have a promise and a purpose on your life. Jesus has great things for you in this life. Amen. Came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, as this is the fruit of it. This is the blessings they're seeing as the spies went out. This is 
the land that they're seeing that's flowing with milk and honey and the fruit. We, the church, or we as believers, or we as Christians, we see miracles. We see blessings and healings, deliverances of the Lord, but somehow we see ourselves not worthy to be delivered, not worthy to be healed, not worthy of the blessings, or not worthy of the miracles to take place in our own lives. What do I mean by this? We'll have all the faith in the world when a brother or sister needs prayer, that God's going to move in the situation, or if they're facing a giant or the enemy that, that God's going to move. But then when we ourselves come up forward, for some reason, something inside of us, we start to doubt. We start to think, oh, well, I know God did it for this person. I know God did it for that person. But I don't think God wants to do it for me. And this can be blessings. This can be healings, miracles, whatever you have going on in your life. For some reason, I, I just see it in the, in the body of God that we struggle with that at times. And tonight, again, I just want you to ask yourself, how do you see yourself? <clears throat> Verse 28, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The spies report that the land was good. However, the people or the world or unbelievers or the enemy were too strong to be conquered. By who? By the children of God, by the people who have his blessings on them. They're looking at what they're seeing in the giants and the land and the walled cities, and they're telling themselves, we can't conquer this. We can't conquer what's in front of us. We can't conquer this enemy. We can't conquer this sickness, this disease. We can't conquer the finances that we struggle with. We have to remember that we have God dwelling inside of us. We are conquerors. Verse 30, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Good job, Caleb. Great job. If only the children of Israel would have heard Caleb that day and believed. Church, if only you would truly hear the word that I'm bringing you tonight. How do you see yourself? <clears throat> Verse 31, but the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And then the next verse, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our sight as grasshoppers, in our own sight, and we see, or and so we were in their sight. Children of Israel only saw the sides of the giants and their strength. They saw themselves as grasshoppers, and because of that, the enemy saw them as grasshoppers as well. Joshua and Caleb are the only ones who saw the victory. I'm going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 16, and we're going to read verses 11 through 13. I'm going to be quick on this because Brother Matt just read this setting of Scripture a couple weeks ago. And it says, And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and withal of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. I love this next verse. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. <clears throat> now here it is, young David, he gets anointed by God. Uh, it says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Sound familiar, church? In that very next chapter, verse seven, or chapter 17, now let me just... The Philistines are uh, standing on one mountain. The children of Israel are on another mountain with the valley in between them, and they're getting ready to go to war. 
quickly, I want to emphasize how big the enemy is. Now, typically, as Christians, we don't do this, but it is in the Bible, so I just want to expand how big the enemy is because sometimes that's all we see. We see the size of the enemy standing in front of us, and we truly can't see past that next step in life where God's going to bring us to. So quickly, I want to show this. Verse 4, 1 Samuel 17 and 4. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. How tall is that? That's approximately nine feet, nine inches tall. So if you think about a basketball goal rim, like professional size, he's just a couple inches shorter than that. And think, he is massive. I mean, he is a warrior standing in front of Israel, challenging them day to day. Verse 5 says, and he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. Think about this chain. You see it in, in old, old, old time war, that chain of mail, and it's hanging down, and it's for if you get you know stabbed with a sword, it will deflect off of it. So he's wearing a coat of the chain mail, and it weighed 5,000 shekels of brass. Now, how heavy is that? Approximately 125 pounds was the coat he had on. So just picture my coat, and this is 125 pounds. This is a big guy. This is a giant, truly. Verse 7, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. So picture a sword and picture the tip of it. His was like a weaver's beam, and the end of it, just the end of his spear weighed approximately 15 pounds. I mean, something that just weighs a few ounces can do so much damage, and this is 15 pounds coming at you. To the children of Israel, I'm sure his armor seemed impenetrable. Verse 10, and the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. The children of Israel, when they heard this, I defy the armies of of God. I defy the church. I defy first church. When the enemy comes out at you like that, children of Israel were powerless. They were humbled, already defeated in their hearts. But this ought not to be for the church, for believers, but it does happen. We tend to forget who we are. We forget who dwells inside of us. And it's because of that huge enemy that's standing in front of us, blocking the next path that God has for us. Verse 16, And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. 40 days he's in their face saying, saying that I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that will fight me together. Forty days he's doing this. The same length of time that the children of Israel spied out the land. I thought that was, that was pretty significant. They spied out the land 40 days, came back with an evil report, and now the enemy of them, the giant, is in their face 40 days in a row challenging them to come fight him. Verse 21. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. So now they're battling. Verse 26. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away their reproach from Israel? Remember, this is David. This is the young, young boy. Not even a warrior. He says, I love this part. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? What does that mean, uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this unsaved enemy? Who is this non-believer? Who is this who doesn't serve the God that I serve, challenging our whole army and thinking he's going to take us out? Who is he? This next verse, take a deep breath. Verse 28, and Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. This is the oldest son of Jesse. This is David's older brother. Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, 
Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. Church, we've got to be careful that you are not discouraged in your brothers and sisters in the Lord. We do not want our brother's enemy, or we do not want to be our brother's enemy. We do not want to cause uh, them seeing themselves in a negative light. We don't want them to be defeated because of our words. <clears throat> Sister Bennett just shared a story with us the other day that two, two cups, they drew out some words and put them in the cups. One cup was full of negative words. One cup was uh, filled with inspiring or encouraging words. They looked under a microscope, filled them with water. The negative words, they looked all ugly and just nasty looking. And you look under the microscope on the positive words or the encouraging words, and there they are, just the most beautiful light, beautiful picture you could see. Your words truly hold weight. And that's why we have to know who we are. If we walk around with our heads down and defeated and saying that, oh, God's not going to do this for me, he's not going to do this or that, we've already defeated ourselves and we've already taken God's power from him. <clears throat> Verse 32, And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth. You're a young person. And he a man of war from his youth. Again, we don't want to discourage anyone who is answering the call and the purpose God has put on their lives. We want to encourage our young people, for they truly are the future for carrying this gospel on after we're all gone. Let's be encouraging to to our brothers and sisters and to the youth. The youth can do mighty things for God, and they do mighty things for God. Verse 36, I'll just have a few more verses. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. This is David talking. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, and he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. That same God that delivered you from the sickness, the same God that delivered you from your disease, the same God that delivered you from your trial, your tribulation, your storm, is the same God that's going to deliver you from your current situation. Let's please not be like the children of Israel in the fact that God walked them from miracle to miracle only to keep stepping backwards. Let's keep moving forward and know that when that giant gets in front of us, there's no questions asked like, David, I already slew the bear. I already slew the lion. What's this nine feet, nine inch tall man? I'm going to take him out in Jesus' name. Verse 45, then said David to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts or in the name of Jesus, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. You can put that however you want, but I come to you in the name of Jesus, the God of the Lewis family or the God of the Ladoyan family or the God of the Hummel family, the God of the Evans family, the God of First Church of Portsmouth. Verse 46, this day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee, and I will take thine head from thee, and will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And in all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And we know that David goes on and he defeats the giant with no problem, takes a sling, knocks him down, takes his own sword, does the business, and, and that was that. <clears throat> Just remember, Israel, scared of Goliath, but David, confident in who he was, 
He was a shepherd boy, not a warrior. He couldn't even, he couldn't even bear the armor when Saul tried to put his armor on him. He loved God and was circumcised, which is equivalent to us being born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. That confidence allowed him to battle Goliath because David knew it was his battle. It was the Lord's battle. He knew that the Lord will fight his battles. Church, the Lord is going to fight our battles. It doesn't matter if you're up against cancer. It doesn't matter if you're up against surgery. It doesn't matter if you're up against depression or anxiety. <clears throat> it's, not, it's not for us to fight the cares and plagues of this world. It's, it's only through Jesus that we're going to make it through. I just have two more scriptures I want to leave with you because I keep asking, how do you see yourself? Who are you? How do you see yourself? First Peter chapter 2, and it's verses 9 and 10. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light, which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. That's who we are, church. <clears throat> That's who we are. We're the chosen generation. We're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. People don't understand why we run around and lift up our hands and clap and are joyful. It's because we're praising the one who created us. We're praising the one who's delivered us. We're praising the one who's kept us from miracle to miracle and to blessing to blessing. <clears throat> Romans 8 and 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Please stand with me. I know that was a, a lot of me reading scripture. Um, and I try not to do that, especially on Wednesdays. It's, sometimes it's tough. I know everyone's tired, but I just hope that, I hope that the message is just clear that, <clears throat> God, I don't want us to lose who we are in you. I don't want us to lose that relationship with you. God, I, I don't want us to see ourselves as grasshoppers every time something comes up against us, a trial or a tribulation or a storm in our life. I want us to know, God, I know you're going to see me through. You are the pillar of cloud by day. You're the pillar of fire by night. You're guiding me. You're leading me. You dwell inside of me. If everyone could just lift up your hands, just praise the Lord for us for a few minutes. I know it's Wednesday. I know you're tired, but just give God some glory right now. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you, God. We love you, Jesus. Have your ways in our hearts, Lord. Help us to see ourselves as you see us, God. Well, church, I definitely want to see myself as God sees me. <clears throat> he always gives you the encouragement. He gives you the, the little boost that you need <laughs> from day to day. So I thank him for it. I love him.
uh, church. You, uh, don't forget your tithes and offerings if you have them tonight, and uh, you are dismissed in Jesus' name.